सर 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 स्टार्ट यस प्लीज गो यस यस हैप्पी गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन टुडे वी हैव एन इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक दैट इज वेयर ऑफ एडिटिव मैन्युफैक्चरिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड इंडस्ट्रियल पर्सपेक्टिव इज गोइंग टू बी डेलीवर्ड एन एमिनेंट पर्सनालिटी डॉक्टर एन शिवस सन्मुगम associate professor department of mechanical engineering national institute of technology trichapalli 15 first of all we thank the today's chief guest uh, dr sivasan mosar for readily accepting my our invitation to deliver today's uh, topic in the emerging topic and uh, we are very much thankful sir we are very much welcome you sir to our platform thank you so much sir we enjoy some years some local students very much happy to be with you today and uh, looking forward to hear your excellent talk on this, on this uh, particular topic the the additive where where are where are additive manufacturing 3d printing is in today's context it is a you know important topic you know whether it is a smart manufacturing industry 4 or it's a one of the pillar of industry the, you know the industry 4 and it is a uh, gaining popularity nowadays and uh, many of the components are being manufactured that uh, what is the difference between subtractive manufacturing and uh, this uh, where where are additive manufacturing is great saving of materials always the components are built to the same then machined closely there is a saving great saving and today's cost is very much cut to, to, to due to this uh, energy technologies so we institute of engineers in association with the computers of india so say that is you know our uh, safety and quality forum new delhi and uh, in indian so welding trichy chapter indian welding society southern zone indian so metal trichy chapter indian so industry engineering indian so metals indian society of non district testing and kumari are you we all joining today for today's program uh, before pandemic we conducted in our uh, bhl campus 3000 acres campus we conducted in our ia building uh, physical uh, you know uh, meet it was uh, in a uh, for fast three decades we are conducting this meeting and after the pandemic we switched over to this uh, virtual mode this is our 149 program so with this uh, introduction about uh, this thing and uh, i call upon the engineer madhuramani uh, past chairman of indus indus in the institute of industry engineering to introduce the speaker to the to our chief guest to the audience sir over to engineer madhuramani sir good evening sir good yes, evening sir. to everybody today we are having a honorable speaker dr shiva sanmugam so he, the associate professor of mechanical engineering department in national institute of technology trichy he has completed his b from jj college of engineering and technology Emmy completed it from Medco. He got his PhD in mechanical engineering from NIT Trichy. From November 2008 to February 2018, he worked in NIT as assistant professor, associate professor. March 2008 to till date, he is working as earlier he was assistant professor. Now he is working as associate professor. So he is. having rich experience in the teaching as well as other academic activities so he has undertaken eight projects as funded by research product by be out of this eight five were sponsored by bhgl one was sponsored by nlt and another was sponsored by department of science and technology so the eight one related to kerala minerals department like industry institution interaction nit is playing a vital role in this our dr shiva sanmugam completed eight funded projects now he is undertaking a non going project that is funded by isro vikram sara bai science center trivandrum at an outlay of some 30 lakhs the title of the project that is undergoing is design analysis development development of metallic liners for spherical gas bottle for aerospace applications like this he is undertaking many research projects on his own he has guided many students to complete their mtech thesis ms thesis and the phd thesis he delivered a good number of lecture programs in various colleges he is a life member of indian welding society Indian Society for Technical Education is holding the life membership. Associated in bubbling in the publication of a number of academic books and journals related to PhD and other programs. He is having rich experience, and we can say a lot about him. 
So with this small introduction, I am handing over the question to Selvaraj sir. Thank you, Engineer Madhuramani, for an excellent introduction of today's speaker. I now I call upon our Engineer Sivasan Moon sir uh, to deliver his talk, sir. Before that, I uh, welcome all the participants throughout the India and uh, all our members, all the participants to today's program. Over to Dr. Sivasan Moon, sir. For his thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Selvaraj sir, and thank you, Madhuramani sir, for giving a, a small introduction about the career of Sivasan Moon. Thanks a lot. You are having and, a lot more to say, but I am limiting to... to no to problem, sir. No problem. No problem. It's my pleasure. Uh, before entering into my today's presentation on the set topic of wire and dark additive manufacturing and industrial perspective, I want to thank uh, especially uh, uh, Engineer Salvaraj, sir, for continuously calling me and fixing up the tentative date. And today he fixed the date for giving out this uh, presentation. And I also thank Madhuramani sir uh, for giving me an opportunity because so many societies or so many local chapters are combining and they are arranging the uh, lectures. It is a hats off work for the past three decades. They are doing this wonderful job. So today only I got this opportunity to associate myself towards this forum. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure welcome, to associate with you. So we have Indian Indian Institute of Welding, Indian Welding Society, Institution of Engineers India, uh, Industrial Engineering. So many forums, uh, forums are coming together to arrange this wonderful lecture series on different engineering topics. Thank you. And I also I want to put a special thanks through this forum uh, from my bottom of my heart that uh, in the last meeting, uh, you honored my guru, Dr. K. Sakarnarana Swami, sir, uh, as a best engineer award on the best, that is at Engineers Day. And a special thanks to the Indian Institute of Engineers, uh, uh, that is of Institution of Engineers, Indian chapter. So for great honoring my guru. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. Okay. So with the small thankfulness, I'm just directly getting into this part of wire and dark additive manufacturing. The purpose of accepting that invitation is I want to create some sort of forum. So if you go to something about the foreign countries, all the inventions or innovations are developed or originated or originated only from that industrial institution background. Uh, I request the participants to mute their mics because it is creating some sort of it. Uh, Lakshmanan sir, please unmute your mic. Uh, please mute your mic. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so all the inventions, all the phenomenon, all the fundamentals are, are derived only from the academic institutions or the university level. So, and there is a very, very big connection between the academic institutions and the Indian industries. So if there is a new technique has been emerged in the market that has been evolved from the university. So, but in Indian sectors, but in Indian industries, as well as Indian academic institutions are concerned, there is no much, there is no much connectivity, even though uh, like uh, IITs or NITs are, are joining together, handshaking together to develop some sort of things still, some more things are essential. That's why I am accepting this type of invitation from an industry background, from that uh, uh, society background to show what our industry, what our academicians are working in that uh, university level, whether these informations are highly helpful. What are all the development that we are creating in our laboratory that will speak, that will sort out the issue normally faced in the industrial sectors. That's why I prepared this topic in such a way that wire and dark additive manufacturing and industrial perspective. So you can easily connect the lecture, what I'm going to deliver with respect to that current practice and give me an opportunity, not only for Subhash the persons who are working in different parts of the academic institution across the country. So please provide an opportunity. We are working towards that uh, digitalization in manufacturing and also developing a beautiful product and indigenous development. Okay. 
So with the small, small preamble about the topic that I have projected here, with this preamble, I am moving to the next part of the presentation. So the agenda of today's presentation, starting from the introduction, and I'm going to give something about what is that buy to fly ratio. It is a very, very important ratio. That's why in that uh, uh, engineer Silvaraj sir uh, discussed something about, provided something about, so cost saving, material wastage. So I'm going to give more emphasis. I'm going to put more light on that buy to fly ratio. Then the classification of that process, process flow, how this VAM is going to uh, utilize for developing a product and also the application advantages, capabilities of the VAM process in today's industrial scenario, in today's world, and also VAM matrici. I am not going to take all the information from the website. Sir, Sivasan Munsar, you are uh, muted, sir. Sir, excuse me, Sivasan Munsar, you are not able to hear your talk. Kindly unmute, sir. Uh, I think uh, somebody has muted my uh, lecture. I think so. Ah, okay, okay. Now I, I, so I told you... my staff eh, not to unmute you yourself. Anyway, you can proceed. Sir. Now you I are think... muted. Yes, yes, yes. So when you go for these analytical studies, what is that? You can play with the boundary conditions. You can play with the governing equations of that problem. What are all the input that you want to incorporate to that equations? You can incorporate and find out the output response of the system, any process, any system. And when you go for the numerical simulation, there is a lot and lot of innovations are there. They have developed with the help of these matrix methods as well as the difference equations. They have developed the dances, abacus, nastron, patron, so many finite element packages, finite different packages or finite volume packages are available where you can understand whether you get that fruitful output or not for this type of uh, input conditions. Initial conditions are essential boundary conditions. What about that output that without spending huge amount of the money, you can find out the suitability of the system. But Whenever you are going to use that analytical studies or numerical simulation, the main thing is you have to validate your results. How you are going to validate your results, then you have to depend on something about that experimentation. That's why I am focusing more on this experimentation part. I'm giving less weightage to something about the numerical simulation and the analytical studies. If I'm getting another opportunity, then I can show the capability of the numerical packages that we can use it for doing the numerous design and analysis of a system. Even in the design concept itself, you can use this type of analysis package to find out 
whether the design the system will perform in a good condition or in a worse condition okay so this is a small background related to the research you can put your problem under these three headings maybe in something about the experimentation or the analytical studies or numerical simulation if you are doing experimentation there is no need of going for a validation because experimentation is truth when you go for this analytical studies you have to validate the results either by doing some sort of numerical simulation or compare with the previous to published data or something with respect to the experimentation sir i am going to do only the numerical simulation part there's a the small symbol that is a problem here that is that uh, uh, icon that that is that i am unable to close this icon anyway uh, i'll just move it to that uh, corner of that presentation <clears throat> okay so numerical simulations you have once again you have to validate the results either you can go for the analytical studies compare the results compare the percentage of error compare the results between that numerical simulation and analytical studies go for that uh, uh, percentage of error estimation and when you go for comparing with experimentation same thing maybe you only a preliminary experimental trials may be conducted and you can compare the results with that uh, numerical simulation output so in order to validate the results sir okay so i have i have categorized this one under the three different headings something about the introduction uh, and also with respect to the research we have an experimentation part analytical studies and uh, uh, numerical simulation sir now the time is to i want to define what is the additive manufacturing see friends when you when you get into that most of the web pages if you if you if you browse most of the web pages they use the term 3d printing additive technology additive manufacturing synonymous but if you go to the root and if you find out what is the difference sir why all the techniques are using the same word of 3d printing and the additive manufacturing sir if you go to that phenomenon if you go to that definition of the 3d printing it is used yes. something like a fused deposition modeling that is of the so called fdm process the purpose of this fdm process is to visualize the object so you can you have a design idea you can with the help of a design you can develop the model either in your modeling packages either by means of solid works or solid edge or cat ia or uni graphics whatever may be the package that you have the design concept may be converted into in the form of 3d model and if you want to visualize the 3d model then you can use the 3d printing technique of fdm maybe something about a filament is there so you can deposit that filament in additive fashion it is only for visualizing something but if we take the definition if we take that inherent definition of this additive manufacturing is what is it sir the definition it states that it is the product where you can directly use the product for application for its useful purpose for its uh, for its something it, it may be a part or it may be a component directly you can add the part into the component you can directly add the component to the assembly it is not only for visualization it is a useful output you can use it directly for your purpose that is the major difference but most of the web pages if you see if you gather so many information in the web sources like 3d printing is something called that additive manufacturing no if we go into that into in depth of the 3d printing it is used with something like a visualization maybe something about that uh, polymer based or something about that uh, elastomeric based like that you are going to visualize only for seeing the object and and something when you go for this additive manufacturing you can create the component you can directly use the component for its purpose correct so now i think it's a right time to define what is that additive manufacturing with respect to that astm that is american society of testing of testing and materials testing of materials and as defined additive manufacturing as a process of joining materials to make objects from three dimensional model data usually layer upon layer as opposed to subtractive manufacturing technology sir i want to i want to take your previous time of another 2 minutes in such a way that why you are directly going for a additive manufacturing instead of a subtractive manufacturing why is there what is the need sir if if i go if if something about if you, if i am taking you 
if i'm using a time machine if i'm keeping you that uh, in the year of 1980s or 1990s what is that a uh, 19 uh, the something about 1995 to 2000 what is that sir the design engineer is there in that company then there is a draftsman then there is a uh, uh, developer so something about a CAD, cad engineer then an analyst after that what is that a production engineer or a manufacturer so design engineer what is the role of the design engineer he creates or she creates something virtually according to the need of the customer according from according to the need of the market survey so the ma graduates or the uh, uh, sales representative get the data from the market survey feed the data to the design engineer so the design engineer what is the role so he 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 took the design he took the concept from the sales representative or from the market survey he is doing something he or she is doing something on the paper correct friends after that what normally they will do sir once it is drafted it is given to the draftsman for extrapolate the drawing by using that autocad something you can do it with the 2d or something about with respect to the 3d but 2d is sufficient to make it give it to a manufacturer after it has been developed in the 2d then yeah, it is delivered to a cad mo cad engineer where he converts all the 2d part to a three dimensional part then the three dimensional part then there will be a some sort of brainstorming session what is that material what about the cost etc etc then the design is given to the manufacturer or the production engineer or the show floor engineer or the shop floor manager after seeing all the design he may aware of that hey it is something a complicated design what is a complicated design it is not a big complicated design but he is using a odd hole something about a 11.5 mm diameter hole sir for 11.5 mm diameter hole how i can procure a bolt net so in such cases the shop engineer or the shop floor engineer what he will do he will send the design once again to the cad engineer that this design is odd i am unable to provide a 11.5 mm hole in the component that you have designed uh, sir i think i have some sort of disturbance ah, thank you thank you sir uh, uh, what is it this is the odd design sir 11.5 mm hole it's very difficult to do do it if i if i create that thing it is not a big problem but finding out a bolt net for this type of 11.5 is another odd design it is a, it is a difficult task then what is that once again it is redesigned and it will be once again delivered to the shop floor manager for production or that manager or the production engineer see there is a time delay because of this time delay you will not reach to the you will not reach to the market within the stipulated time okay then because of the advent of science and technology they have introduced the concept in the year of 2002 2005 the concurrent engineering principle what is a concurrent engineering principle there is a representative from each department there is a representative from the administration there is a representation from the finance section there is a representation from the uh, tool engineering division there is a separation from the uh, scheduling person so if we get all the representative once the design is flashed in front of the screen in front of the people who are listening that lecture who are uh, participating in the concurrent engineering thing so they are doing some sort of brainstorming and they will find out the solution of the problem see if it is an odd design they will redesign as and when required and it will once again deliver back to the shop floor engineer or the production manager production engineer for its fabrication correct friends but you need so much of people to be involved in developing the component but we and another we have a big revolution in industry 3.0 and we are in that industry 4.0 now what is that a single person is sufficient you can sit in a computerized or something about a air conditioned room with a big machine either it's something about the powder based technology or a wire based technology a single computer is sufficient once he is getting a raw design in his mind he developed the design using that software once it is developed in the software there is another package where you can feed the design to that particular package it will convert the g codes and m codes available with respect to that machine tool so directly it will be given to the system and a product will come out from that system so thing is instead of going for a conventional route now we have adapted a very very beautiful technology 
a single skilled engineer a skilled person is sufficient to feed the data once it is fed into the system you will get the product in the useful form so you can directly deliver to the customer so after doing some sort of peripheral machining that i am going to discuss so as a process of joining materials to make objects from three dimensional model data usually layer upon layer so you are going to add something on the positive z direction x and y is the movement of the table and z direction is the movement of the tool whatever may be the tool it is a powder tweeder it may be a coaxial nozzle or if you are going for the powder based deposition then you have to move the negative z direction the table should be moved along the negative z direction that's all but it is totally different from the our conventional subtractive manufacturing methodology what is that a solid metal is set, fed into the system you have to use the tool either it may be a single point tool or it may be a multi head or a turret head or a milling machines or a planning machines or it may be a six axis cnc machine whatever may be the thing you are going to remove the material and you are going to get the final shape of the component after doing the extensive machining of the material okay friends additive manufacturing is a technology that promises to reduce part cost by reducing material wastage and time to market sir there is no need of concurrent engineering sir there is no need of involving all the people to complete the task a yeah, big machine you have to invest the money you have to procure that machine you have to design the component according to the need then feed the system get the product do the peripheral machining go for a quality check using a computer aided system quality check may be of cmm of different uh, uh, axis movement then you can deliver the component to the customer so that you can reach the market within the stipulated period of the time the main advantage whatever may be the technique it is of a powder based it is of powder or it is of wire based technology so the only thing is you are going to feed layer by layer and you are reducing the material wastage as well as the time to market sir in the van process now coming to my technology not my technology so i am working in this technology that's why i privileged to take that as a my technology wire and dark additive manufacturing 3d metallic components are built by depositing beads of weld metal in a layer by layer fashion <coughs> sir i have i have depicted one picture over here it will give a very beautiful information on how the layers of bead are placed one above the other so you need sir if i want to feed something sir my my belly is not filled sir i i am I, i want to take some sort of food then what you are going to do so take a plate take some chawal or the rice or that sadam put sambar so after that you are putting something about that vegetables correct sir sir you need some sort of substrate to take something to feed something correct friends same thing here also you need a substrate material above that you are going to lay the filler wire that's all you are going to fuse the deposit fuse the filler wire and you are going to deposit the filler wire one above the other that is clearly depicted in this process depicted in this picture you see it has been oriented with different angles correct as it may be very close to something about 60 degree it is very close to something about 75 degree it is very close to the 85 degree i am meeting the angle of mic sir please unmute please mute your mic sir i am getting some sort of disturbance selvaraj sir ah mari muthu mari muthu what happened why are rajesh is there kindly mute and mute 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 the people who are talking i have a request sir kindly mute all of you speaker is getting disturbed mari muthu rajesh please unmute namaste kavin rakha mute the people who are all talking yeah okay so this is the one thing for us just my dear friends so i am i am challenging you in this forum this is the only process with reduction of that material wastage with the reduced material cost with with reduced material you can build in a different angle 
So in powder based technology, it is very difficult. You have to invest so much of money. But here, what you can do, you can rotate the torch, welding torch, it may be a plasma fitted with a cold wire or a hot wire, thick welding machine with a hot wire, or something about electron beam welding with the wire, or a laser beam welding with the wire, with the filler wire. So or it is a something about a normal conventional MIG building machine. So in such cases, you can tilt it, you can orient the torch, you can go for a 2G position, 3G position, and you can build the material. That is the beauty of this process. In the VAMP process, 3D metallic components are built by depositing beads of felt bead in a layer by layer fashion. Finally, what is that? WAALM. So, wire arc additive layer manufacturing can be used to deposit a variety of materials that can be welded, such as steel, nickel alloys, and titanium alloys. I have listed only very few. You can do something about aluminum alloys, cobalt alloys, all type of alloy. If we have something about a filler wire, if it is in the form of filler wire, so mostly most of the filler wire are used coming out with the diameter of 1.2 mm. If we have the filler wire, if you have a robotic machine, then you can play with the filler wire according to the dimensions, according to the component, you can develop your own component in the laboratory. Okay, friends. So insights about this technology, I think I have clarified, I have discussed something about what is VAM, what is the need of VAM, what is the development of the VAM, what is it? So because this process is very old, it is, I, we have reinvented once again, because it is something about a hundred years old technology. So that I'm going to give it today now, sir, although the wire added additive layer manufacturing process has been around for almost a century, the first pattern was filed in the year of 1920 by Baker Modern Welding and Automation Technologies, provide opportunity that were not previously available. Sir, welding is known, but using the welding technique, what type of things you are going to do? What is the additional technique you are going to adapt? This is the technology. And this pattern was filed in the year of 1920, we are in the 2022, something around 101 years old technique. This technique adopts, uh, this technology adopts arc welding tools and wire as a feedstock for additive manufacturing process. So it is not a very, very complicated process. It is not an expensive process. Sir. If you go with the powder-based technology, minimum you have to invest of two crores or three crore rupees. But now I am going to give in terms of the cost, what is it? Sir, if you, if you procure a robo welding machine, so robo cost may be something around 15 to 20 lakh rupees. Make it at that uh, a maximum, take 20. Another power source, it may be a Fronius or it may be of what is the Dagon or it may be of something about whatever may be the Kempi or whatever or it may be something about <clears throat> any machine. Uh, so something around 10 lakh rupees, 20 plus 10. If you have a rotary positioner, another 6 lakh rupees, 30, 36. And the consumables, consumables, that is of gas, filler wire, etc. Another four lakhs. So within 40 lakh rupees, you can play like anything. So you can build your own component according to your requirement. So high deposition rate, as you are aware of that building, if you use that building, you can play, uh, you can move the torch if it is of automated, if it is of a special purpose mission, if it is of SPM. So you can move the torch according to the need. You can move the torch with two meters per uh, minute or one meter per minute or something about three meters per minute according to the requirement, according to the capability of the system. So you can deposit the filler wires in a faster manner that is highly difficult when you select other process like a powder-based technology. Low material cost and equipment cost and good structural integrity. As you are aware of that, weld metal strength is more than that of the, uh, the than that of the parent metal or something about the base metal strength. Why, sir? Because there is a grain refinement. You are heating the material. You are crossing the melting point of the material, and you are going for solidification. Once it solidifies, you are getting a grain refinement. If there is a grain refinement, the load will not allow the material will not allow the load to fail against the material. Correct, friends? So integrity make wire and arc additive manufacturing a suitable candidate for replacing the current method of manufacturing from machining of the solid billets or going for a large foldings, especially with regards to low and medium complexity parts. Sir, I am giving some sort of hitch. Sir, why you are not going for a high complexity parts? At the end of the lecture, you can aware of that why I am not highlighting the high complexity of the parts. So that is a pressing need. So the requirement is that 
So there is a pressing need for the development of a process that could replace the current method of manufacturing large structure such as cruciforms, stippled panels, especially used in that blades, wing uh, wing ribs or the wing blades of uh, uh, the aeroplanes or the air airframe structures, wing ribs, etc., which are machined from bullets or large forgings with unsustainable by to fly ratio frames. So the next part is to, I want to give more light on what is that by to fly ratio. So the next slide will give the solution for the question what I raised in the previous uh, slide. Sir, what is a by to fly ratio? Sir, BTF is the ratio defined as the ratio of volume or the mass of the initial workpiece to the finished product. So as you are coming out from that academic background as well as something about the industrial scenario, I am not going to give more emphasis to that about the buy to fly ratio. So if you take a solid preform manufacturing or something about you are going for a conventional subtractive manufacturing, if you want to create a component of 10 mm diameter, then what you are going to do, you are going to procure a 15 mm diameter rod. So you are using a turning operations and you are going to give a depth of cut and you want to remove that 5 mm to get the finish of 10 mm diameter. So what is it? Initial, uh, initial weight is something about initial diameters of 15. So from that, you can find out what is the weight if you are selecting a material as a low carbon steel or medium carbon steel or something about a stainless steel. So find out what is the initial quantity and the final quantity. This is the ratio. So something about the by to fly ratio. Sir, for example, if you want to create this type of a blade, especially used in the airframe structures or the aerospace or something about that uh, uh, big uh, turbines, what is that? If the size is something about one feet cross one feet cross one feet, then you have to procure a solid block of more than one feet. So one feet, instead of one feet, they are going to procure 1.2 or 1.5 according to the availability material. According to the availability of the material, you are going to procure, sir, you are going to machine it Final weight, sir, the initial weight is something about 100 kg, sir. Final weight is only of 20 kg. Final product weight is only of 20 kg. Then 100 by 20, if we take a 100 kg mass, the final product is only of 20 kg, then it is of 5 is to 1 ratio, friends. But the, when you go for this additive manufacturing, especially with the wire root, wire root means what? Wire and dark additive manufacturing. So if we have a 2 kg of filler material, the final product, what you could achieve is something about 1.5. Only a very, very minimum. This 500 gram is wasted only of doing that external machining to get the finish of the component that I will show. So after explaining this one, I will show the thing. So what is it? So this material wastage or the cost incurred, the cost uh, with respect to the material wastage will be add on to the cost of the product. Correct friends? So if you go with that additive manufacturing, you can put nil material wastage. So it is nil means it is not zero completely, but comparatively to that subtractive manufacturing methodology, this is almost nil. So I want to show the picture. So in the first slide itself, I shown that uh, thing to you. So this is something about developed using that uh, 70 S6 filler wire. So you know that it is something about a, a, a mild steel uh, filler wire of diameter 1.2. So I am creating this type of a hollow cylinder. We have the substrate at the bottom. So substrate at that bottom. After completing that band, so if you if you zoom it and if you see my presentation, so you can see layers are uh, placed one above the other, layer upon layer to get this desired height. So after that, I have used our conventional lathe and boring tool to mill the material, to remove the material inside, and you are using the turning tool. That is single point cutting tool to mill the two, remove the material on the outside surface. You see, that is only a, maybe something around 500 or 200 grams wastage. Final output you could achieve directly. You can see it directly. And also, I have made, I have used our CMT. That is a cold metal transformation. Cold metal transfer. It is another advancement in the MIG welding technology. It was developed by Afronius Austria. So they have laid, so we have used that machine for laying that aluminum filler wire. That is something about a, a five series filler wire and 4043 filler wire. And we have deposited at the top. This is that I have used that pencil for making out that mark. So after, before machining, you can see, and after machining, you can see it is available in my table. If you come to my institute anytime, 
so i have already shared my mobile number email id everything any time please don't disturb me after 11 o'clock in the night and before 7 am in the morning so afterwards any time you can call and sir i we need this type of a technology sir otherwise sir you come to me i will show a different technology to you it's my privilege to associate with you to any moment okay so before machining and after machining this comparison will give that the ratio the so called by to fly ratio friends so i am running out of time i am just going in a very very uh, something like a ravel pandi express so we have a beam and the arc technology sir what is the beam technology it is something of that laser or electron beam process and uh, electron beam process wire powder powder means what is that we have a bed or the coaxial type the coaxial nozzle is available from that you are feeding that powder and the laser or electron beam what is it it is going the heat energy which is going to emitted from the laser will be utilized for melting that incoming powder and you are going to deposit it on the substrate material that is of that bed type what is that i am going to show one video to you where the powders are placed on the table according to the layer according to the thickness of the layer the table will be moved along the negative z direction and the laser will scan what about the image it is available in the software it will scan and it will melt the powder so once it is melted upon solidification you will get the component the blown technology is something about the coaxial nozzle so that is called that dld that is something about directed laser fabrications or something about that direct energy deposition directed energy deposition ded and this is something called that selective laser melting we have a selective laser sintering and laser selective uh, selective laser melting so it depends upon the material that you are going to melt whether you are going to cross the melting point of the material or you are going to sinter the material instead of going beyond the melting point you are going to play below the melting point of that material that is called that laser selective laser sintering and this one is of selective laser melting and coming to that electron beam here also we can use that wire wire as a filler material here also you can use a wire as a filler material but if you go for a laser then you have to invest minimum of 35 lakh rupees and maintenance cost is another very very difficult here and electron beam you have to maintain that vacuum so that is also you have to invest huge money that's why we are going for our conventional welding technique sir spend only a minimum amount get a big profit chinna kallu bedda labam what is that we have sir you have to invest only a small things sir you get a very high profit okay so tig mig plasma so you can use any power source of tig welding or a mig welding power source or a plasma you can use wire as a pit stock and you can end up with the wire or additive manufacturing process sir i am going to play a one video here so i think most of you are well aware of that anyway it's my duty to get the synchronization between the previous slide and present slide i am going to play this video it is of uh, selective laser melting <coughs> so this gentleman wearing a white color and a full hand scarf he is doing all the things he is going to import the thing and he is going to distribute that impeller made up of uh, aluminium so they are using the aluminium powder for creating the 16 uh, impellers so wherever it is needed the laser is going to melt the material Beautiful thing. Every low power lasers are perfected. There is so many fiber lasers are available. So these fiber lasers are highly efficient. See, as I discussed earlier, so this white color mark is giving out that SLM part. So the order is to feed the uh, material that is that is going to deposit on the on the table. The extra power will be removed. So now laser is going to scan it. That's all. It is of putting the powder uniformly on. 
So it is something about a fiber laser ranging between 400 and 1 kilowatt. And sir, now I am going to share something about if we have high complexity pump. So we can play with the laser because what is the diameter of the laser is something in terms of mm. Something in terms of 100 microns or 200 microns we can achieve. So then if we have so many intricate areas, so many things are available, then we can use one of the powder field. So they have used the platform technology to remove the extra powder. That's all. So after that, what you are going to do, you are going for a peripheral machining to get the finish of the bomb. So finish is required without using only the conventional method. That is inevitable. Conventional technique is inevitable. But how far you are using, how much time you are utilizing for that, how much material you are going to get. So there are wide variety of materials. Titan. Plant engineering, aluminium, laminar flow, something about a reverse of plant engineering, maybe something about a titan used in the new plant. Cobalt chromium, similar elements, medical terms. They are finding out the temperature of their body. Chemical crowns are developed using this technology. A small interval is used in a small turbine. So when you when you go for something about another hand. Where we have a wire and dark additive manufacturing. I have limited myself. I am not crossing the limit. I know my height. I, if I am stretching, I know my height. So that's why I cunningly use that word small and medium complexity. Low and medium complexity. Because the problem in uh, wire and dark additive manufacturing, I have a filler wire starting from the diameter of 0.8 mm. So if I have something about the intricate areas, accessing to that area is very, very difficult. Building is a big issue. If I have a filler wire of less than 0.8, then I can go for a high complexity component. But there is no such things are available. That's why still I am playing something in the ground with the help of the available filler wire only with respect to that low and medium complexity component. <clears throat> so the substrate is, has been uh, gripped, has been fixtured in the work table or the welding table. Above that, I am just moving the touch according to the profile I want to feed. <clears throat> See, I am creating a wall like that. You can develop your own component. So these things are something about with respect to that impurities. You can remove it with the help of that wire brush. And wire brush means according to the material what you are going to develop here. So if it is of titanium and all, you have to use a different brushes and you have an entire thing should be enclosed with the inner atmosphere. So like that, this is only a demonstration that will give an idea about how the filler wires are deposited, how the filler wires are melted, how the filler wires are deposited on the substrate material one above the other, layer upon layer. <laughs> Sir, when you compare something about that uh, types of AM, you already what I have discussed is clearly given out over here. It is of high complexity, high geometrical accuracy. Here it is of low geometrical accuracy. This process makes the work area dirty because when you go with the powder, it is in terms of microns or nanar powders and all available. So this is not coming under the green technology. But when you are working with that building, if we have something about a fume extractor, and if you are wearing the PPE and we are wearing the something about that uh, shielding arrangement, that's all. That is a metal shield or something about that shield normally used for that uh, shielding gas, something about if you use it proper PPE, is, then this technology is coming under the green technology. And compared to the cost, it is of more cost competitive. And this is something about the more cost consuming process with respect to that powder based technology. And uh, like Lord Vinayaka, there is so many names are already available for BAM. Sir, like Lord Vinayaka, what are the names, sir? Siddhi Vinayakar, Buddhi Vinayakar, Valamburi, Idamburi, Nirdananda Vinayakar, uh, Vallabha Ganabudhi. So many names are there for that Lord Vinayaka. The same thing here for that BAM. We have so many names are available. Shape welding, shape melting, rapid prototyping, solid preform fabrication, shape metal deposition. So many names you can directly given to this type of a technology. Sir, VAM is better suited for 
low to medium complexity and medium to large scale part sir i want to create so many components 100 components in a time that is very difficult when you go for that powder based but that is still possible when you are using this technology of fab in addition there is a currently a demand for sustainable low cost environmentally friendly it is very very important so environmentally friendly processes with high geometrical accuracy so i have depicted so many pictures over here each one first one is something about the plasma torch they are feeding the cold wire and the, the the torch is attached to the robo everything it is highlighted over here in this picture for your understanding purpose sir what is at vam till date sir in 1990s rolls royce along with cranfield university maybe if you could see so i am not canvassing that cranfield university and all but without the help of cranfield university article it is very difficult to prepare any presentation etc etc writing a technical paper because they have developed they have made so many improvement in that bam technology so i want to acknowledge here with the help of the cranfield university the data is available in the open forum i utilize this data for making out this presentation i acknowledge it here show due interest in the manufacturing of air engine components they are used in 1990 itself they have used the titanium alloy still we are finding it difficult you need something about the entire weld area should be covered with the inert atmosphere maybe something about a combination of helium and argon or a purest form of argon or the pure helium gases and you can work with the high wear resistant materials like nickel alloy synchronal 718 alloy following the interesting subject in years in later years several theoretical models that's why i have used that word analytical studies theoretical and practical modeling approaches were undertaken to study the renowned or renewed field of fab so to understand that fundamental sir i am going to start something about that fab then what is that uh, uh, advice you are going to provide sir take a mission create a single wall that is clearly depicted in this picture so to understand the fundamentals of fam the behavior of a single bead multi layer open loop structure is widely studied focusing on numerous aspects what are all the aspects sir what are the parameters so each one is related to that product each one is related to the product forming appearance design residual stress development and distribution welding process variation strategic tool path planning and many more sir when you go for that building residual stress is inevitable because you are going to heat and you are going to cool the material so because of this alternate cycle the stresses will be induced in that body you can take it as a separate work and you can reduce or you can suppress the residual stresses okay so when you go with that process flow this is how what we discussed in the initial part of my lecture so we have the cad model design adjustment for the vam because peripheral milling is required to get the finish of the component then go for the cam tool pathing converting into g codes and m codes assigning the process parameters for vam do the subsequent simulation for controlling the residual stresses temperature induced in the material temperature developed during that process adapt that either plasma tig mig develop the vam component go for the shape and deformation control go for peripheral cnc meshing and go for that finish of the component finally deliver the component to the material sir nowadays we have a industrial 4.0 so a single man is sufficient you can play with the different fmc that is a flexible manufacturing cell so you have a create 3d three dimensional model so after getting out that model developed using fam so fam so then you can use the scanning method to find out to check the dimensions of that body and you can go for the complete milling of that material to get the finish of the component sir if you go with the defective filler wire sir if i am uh, sir I, i have used the wrong filler wire then you are end up with the porosity cluster porosity or maybe individual porosity find out what is the material what is the conditions you have adapted for utilizing this one sir slowly 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 welding because of uh, welding
something hanged sir and not we are not able to listen very well sir 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 you are not able to hear your voice sir dr sosan mo sir you are not able to hear your voice Sir, I am audible. Okay, sir, audible, audible. Sir. Yeah, now you are only audible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Please so continue, on, sir. Yes, yes, please, please. One second. I I want to join it once again. One five minutes. I'll I'll wind up the session within five minutes. Go, oh, brother. Okay. Please proceed. Please proceed. Morning in progress. Sir, now you are getting my voice, correct? Getting your voice, sir. Please, sir. Yes, yes, please, please. Yeah, you are able to hear you. Hear you. Okay. Sir, coming to that part of that uh, buy to fly ratio. So conventional machining, we have eleven point five used to one. For particular cases, it is not universal. For all the other cases, thank you, thank you, Barian and sir, thank you for your message. And if you see, yeah, one point two meter titanium six AL four V wing span made of BAE system. That is of, uh, uh, it is it is something about. Uh, uh, it is with respect to that uh, Cranfield University was deposited in a flexible enclosure using plasma or building. With the seven axis robotic system, and what is the deposition rate? It's something around 0.8 kg per hour. So the buy to fly ratio, conventional machining, what we have, it is of 11.5 is to one. But when you adapt this technique of VAM, it is of 1.14 is to one for a 24 kg near net shape deposited power to a 21 kg finished part. So only three kg has been wasted. So 24 hours they consider for building out this entire component, and the 24 hours they used for that 30 percent each cooling time. Okay. So we have so many applications. The cost comparison with respect to that material wastage everywhere it has been proven that it is a very very fusible process. And you see another another video I am playing now. A beautiful way of like uh, creating a spots and creating a human head or human skeleton using that welding process. How beautifully they are developing this additive manufacturing. So as I am a welding man, I could understand the capability of this process. So personally, I want to thank my gurus, Dr. K. Sankarnaran Swami sir and Dr. G. Bonashagaran sir because they made me. they have introduced they have injected so these are all the techniques available in that world please utilize the technology and make some sort of things in your life sir and it can be utilized for the repair welding sir another very very important area please make a note of it friends it is for repair welding that's why in the title itself i have used that word an industrial perspective so if we have a three blades in a fan so if something is happened to one blade instead of replacing the entire fan what you can do you can cut the blade which is this is not in good condition and you install a robo very close to that or you can take that component find out the path in which path you have go you have to move the torch for deposition and deposit the component go for the finish it's very difficult to distinguish which one is of that procured which one is of that procured from that market which one is procured which was developed by you that is a beauty of introducing this
picture over here the third blade the blade which is available here it has been developed additively but these two blade are machined with that normal subtractive manufacturing technology so most of this technique has been utilized a very close to the dhl uh, trichirapalli i am just sharing this information to all the uh, all the persons who are coming to my institute uh, so i am just disseminating this knowledge to others sir it is irrespective of that material sir we have a titanium alloys aluminum alloy tool steel super alloy stainless steel refractory even you know something about the tantalum molybdenum it's very close to the 3500 degree centigrade but you know the dark temperature it is very close to that 10000 degree fahrenheit so you can use this technology for making out the process beautifully sir you can compare the vam with other process if terms of cost comp uh, complexity you will not get the good output when i go for this vam but if you go with the other technique it is crossing beyond that average level of 7.5 so titanium porosity in terms of the building defects porosity residual stresses delaminations oxidation cracks surface finish deformation for different materials i have been highlighted over here okay so direct feed powder or wire then my option is only for that wire and you can control that grain refinement sir i want the grain coarsening then you adapt the different movement of the torch sir you can go for a single pass or a parallel pass or different oscillation you can use the manipulation technique of something about a sine wave square wave circular weaving method z type of zigzag movement any method you can adapt according to the requirement of the component according to the configuration of the component so if you adapt this technique automatically you are controlling the cooling rate once you are controlling the cooling rate you can attack the morphology of the material sir i want only the equiaxin i want only the columnar i want only the planar so according to the dendrites you need you can use the strategy you use the manipulation technique so as i discussed in the initial part so any position but it is highly difficult when you go for a powder based it may be a blown type or it may be of the bed type so 2g 3g 3g means you can go down to top or from top to bottom that is also possible sir <clears throat> these are all some of the very very important case study i want to thank um, that is of mx 3d from this information from the website only i gathered this information so a port of rotterdam it is something in the netherland additive manufacturing field lab they have erected the robo in the field for developing this component so the crane hook what is it material nickel aluminum bronze alloy something around 400 kg so 298 layers of nickel aluminum bronze they have made one over the other and they have developed this 400 kg crane hook because you know so as a real manufacturer you you can understand developing this crane hook is a very very difficult task because there is a uniform change in the cross section the thickness is also not uniform so so many things are there when you are designing the crane hook so with this technology you can use this and also you can see a very beautiful bicycle frame i want to thank netherland especially mx 3d for sharing this information in the open forum i acknowledge here without their information so it's very difficult more recently the M mx 3d team used its technology to print 3d print an aluminum bike frame and also you can you can get so many videos recently i think 2 years back or 1 and 1/2 years back the queen of netherland uh, opened this bridge to that public so it was fully developed by vam process the purpose is they are going to monitor how many pedestrians are going to cross or regularly crossing this thing what is that load how many vehicles are going to pass everything they can put some sort of sensor because it is a steel material so you can get the good connectivity electrical connectivity as well as that thermal conductivity so all this information you can grasp it with the help of this thing so during your free time please put something about a 3d printed steel bridge netherland so you get so many things from that and also there is another technology called triax 3d where we have both wire as powder we can feed both the things from a single head that is available here you please make a note of it because 
this presentation was prepared with the intention of giving it for 2 hours 3 hours continuously but uh, because of time uh, limitations i am going to cut short all those things and coming to the part of nit trichy so we have a key man we have a six axis robo what is the dehan make and recently i have procured a uh, will be power source of p500l it is a low spatter 500 amps power source irrespective of the material everything you can use it here it is in terms of the synergic mode if you set the current other prop other parameters will automatically set so once you give the shape we can fit it and we'll give the component to you so we have a fdl controller and uh, i think uh, this slide uh, this slide one second i'll i'll just uh, i want to run this slide so get droplet to the second so you know that uh, droplet to the dark to the ஒன்ஸ்ட்ரோர் and also we tried i think this paper has been published in the open forum if you put my name and you can type that is a fan copper plus steel so steel above the steel we have placed the copper this is not the component i have a separate component and titanium i didn't try we are going to try it that's why i put some sort of caption over here citing it over here and the left hand side the video is playing is something about half machining the half capacity is to distinguish what is the way you have to do the peripheral machining no and so many things the uh, material related to the 347 we have varied the process parameter and we have laid the material and we have performed we have conducted that fitting test to find out the endurance limit of the material and this data has been extracted from the cranfield university of each subsequent layer each subsequent layer they are going for a rolling in order to make the grain instead of going for refinement they are going for coarsening it so the, to get that formability so if you want to achieve the formability you have to play with the uh, microstructure of the material and uh, this texture this data has been taken i think uh, uh, it is something from the literature so it is of the refractory material so they have used that wire plus r quality manufacturing of tantalum so it is very very beyond the 3500 degrees centigrade friends and deposition rate they have used this material for additive manufacturing and uh, I, we have attempted something and i also thank this john roman honage in the year 2018 they have used the analytical techniques for finding out that uh, for for finding out that uh, uh, what is the bead shape what is the height or what is the stresses induced in that body what is the clamping conditions required with respect to the analytical studies and coming to the part of the finite element simulations i am a finite element man with the building background so i have used this abacus packages with the help of this ding et al paper i have utilized this uh, methodology by using that uh, power sources i have simulated with the help of my scholars i want to thank mr pramod for making out the simulation i want to thank arun kumar for doing this analysis you can do the simulation first understand the process find out the temperature distribution once you are readily available all the things are correct then you proceed further and you can complete the task so the main part of this presentation is to we have a experimentation we have analytical studies and we have something about the numerical simulation if somebody through this forum do this information that i am going to share it now i am sharing it through this forum this will be helpful sir you can come to nit trichy nit trichy is not only teaching the graduates sending so many graduates and also we are we are building some sort of nation and we are something from the institution of national importance we will give some sort of solution to the industrial problem that's why i am readily accepting this invitation especially from engineer samarath sir for giving this type of a lecture to people okay uh, and also so another part if you visit my web page so please don't think that i am exaggerating myself these are all the facility it is not a property of dr shiva it is a property of lord shiva it is a government property anybody at any corner of this country can use the facility apart from that i have a mechanical testing facility i think i have circulated i i shared the information to selvaraj sir i think he circulated the informations among the group members we have all mechanical testing starting from fatigue tensile 
compressive, flexural, in terms of different capacity, 100 ton, 10 tons, 5 tons, even 1 ton, even with the small tissues, sir, I want to test the tissues, fiber, everything we can test it over here. And I have a wire cut EDM machine for preparing the sample. I have all the welding facilities starting from resistance, resistance part welding, plasma welding, TIG welding, micro, micro TIG, micro plasma, cold metal transfer, robotic MIG. So many things are available during your free time. You please get into my website. It is available, NIT Trichy, or put my name in the Google. Get the information. I am not canvassing. I already shared this to you. It is it is not a property of Shiva Shanmugam. It is a property of Lord Shiva. So, uh, coming to that part, without these references, it's highly cumbersome or highly difficult to complete this presentation. I want to acknowledge each and every professors, each and every people who have helped me a lot for coining or making out this presentation. I have shared this presentation to this forum. So with the single rows from my mind, I have providing you a bunch of rows, but in slide, I am projecting only a single dose to you friends. The single rows, I'll put a thank you to the organizer for giving me an opportunity. It's my privilege to part of this institution of engineers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It was a very interesting uh, you know, webinar on WAM. Really, you have brought everything, comments of WAM. Thank you so much, sir. Really, it was a wonderful knowledge treat for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we can answer Thank the you. screen, sir, so that people can ask questions. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Ask I have opened it questions. in one more system. Uh, anybody can, uh, can raise your question. It's my pleasure to answer the question, sir. Sir, there's a question from me. The, uh, for WAM 3D printing, any standards have been developed, sir, recently? Anything? No, sir. It is not It is not it with is. respect to the standards. Oh. Uh, standard means you have to test it. That's all. According to the ASTM standard, we can test the component. But there is no standard for this VAM process. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. The, okay, the participants can ask questions, sir. Other participants, if you have any other engineers, they can, if you have experts, they can ask questions to sir. Because it is in, still in that uh, emerging state, uh, they are right, utilizing sir. for their own purpose. And uh, if there is a one more video, I think I missed that video. Recently, there was a video, it has been popped up in that YouTube, uh, the entire casing of the rocket, the launch vehicles, like, the entire casing of the uh, launch vehicles are developed through VAM. Right, sir, uh, I, I think uh, you, somebody you, you put uh, uh, additive manufacturing uh, launch vehicles like that. If you type something in that uh, YouTube, you you'll get. Uh, I think it is an eighteen minutes or twenty minutes video. It will direct you to a different uh, scenario. Uh, thank you, Kamin, sir, for giving a, a good feedback. Uh, sir, sir I, I want both... I am Lashman and speaking. Well as positive feedback. Yes, Hello. please, sir. Sir, yes, sir, sir, please, sir any please. techniques uh, doing this 3D manufacturing in the molten form of uh, metals? No, here itself in welding, you are going to melt the material, that's all. And you are going to deposit the material on the substrate or the layers that you have developed previously. So we are we are melting the material. So there is no chance or there is no other process available without melting the material. It's very difficult to do the additive manufacturing. Okay, sir. And this is related to welding uh, method. Yes, sir. Okay. It is a, it, the same thing. The, I am using the same welding machine for building the component. Okay, sir. Thank you. So I heard about the civil engineering. IIT Madras has developed a 3D printing houses. Ah, um, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, can yes. you throw some light on that, sir? No, the thing is, I, I also noticed in that uh, uh, WhatsApp, it has been circulated extensively. So oh. thing is, instead of going for this one, they have created the mortar. They have created that mortar. What we have on that... Uh, Normal concrete, like concrete and all. Previously, we have used that something about a singing machine. We have to put the gravels, you have to put the sand with a different ratio, and they have to mix it and they are going for a roof and all. 
the same thing which is available in the machine it is injected like what what normally we are getting out from the toothpaste la that is that paste what is coming out what is ejected out from the toothpaste same technique they have followed that's all they are getting something about that uh, uh something about that they they are they are tested and they are finding out the orthotropic properties right sir thank you sir thank you sir sir uh, regarding the surface finish how uh, this can be improved sir yes the thing is uh, I, i think uh, i i want to share the slide once again to you uh, yeah, yeah, please one one second i think so my slide is visible yeah see, your slide is visible yes, sir. yes, sir. yes sir. now you you can see this is this is that uh, developed by a cranfield university so they have used the roller every time once it is deposited they have used that uh, roller to make the finish to get the finish of the component and also they are attackingly they are beating the material in a cold condition see they are using the roller and they are going to straighten it the material to get the good finish of the component you see three four pitches are available first is something about there are lot of undulations on the side surface if i if i draw you will get that exposure sir this is a lot and lot of undulations sir okay please sir lot and lot of undulations after putting out the layer rollers you will get there is a finish of the component so it is that if you have a well automated system then you can play all those things Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, sir? The uh, participants have any other questions? We can ask. Otherwise, we will move on to the next agenda. Thank you, sir. Anything? If if you are unable to speak to me, you please type it in the chat box. I have opened it in another system. I can readily see your chat. Sir, so uh, some there was some appreciation for you, one Mr. Engineer Kevin, Kevin, a nice presentation, sir. John Raju Kumar uh, from MM College, he is told nice lecture, sir. Uga, then Uganda Manikam, Uganda, Uganda Manikam, he is told nice, uh, nice presentation. And M. Vadivel, excellent and informative lecture. And Periyan, uh, nice lecture, sir. Sir, there are some lot of appreciations for you, sir. Please. sir i want some sort of criticization not only the conversation <laughs> appreciation will not mold me uh, will not mold me i i i want some sort of criticism critics critics it is highly helpful to make my presentation better otherwise i'll get up with some sort of ego okay. uh john rajkumar sir where can i find simulation uh so i i could i couldn't understand the uh, question that you have raised well i can i find the simulation means you can use that finite element packages like uh, ansys abacus oh in nit trichy because we have all the uh, all the finite element packages and it is available everywhere so you can you can install it you can procure the licensed version of ansys or abacus install in your computer and you have to tune it because it is a generalized software it is a generalized software and you have to tune it according to your need ah great question how do we control the impurities and the complex shape cannot be entity tested who said sir there is a lot and lot of hard uh, like the visual scanning methods are available so i have experienced that when uh, madhuramani sir introduced me He, he finally he said i am working for a project with bssc isro vikram sarabhai space center they have all the facility so i have i, I worked for that 430 mm diameter cylindrical spherical gas bottle that has been welded using that cmt welding that entire bo gas bottle has been investigated through ndt technique so many radiographic test techniques are available 3D scanners are available to find out the inherent flaw. I think I have answered your question. Second question, first question, what is the question? How to control the impurities? As my presentation, if you carefully go through my presentation, 
so if you are using a improper filler wire so first you have to preserve the filler wire in a correct manner if you are using a improper filler wire then you are end up with some issues that i have highlighted in the presentation i think ah yes great sir you see this filler wire when i am doing that investigation first you see lot and lot of porosities so the final product also is end up with the porosity so selection of the material is another process and selection of shielding gas arrangement sir whether it is of helium is required or combination of gas sir if i am using a stainless steel i am using 89 98% argon plus 2% uh, carbon dioxide like that if you use a different shielding arrangement then you can easily control the impurities or something about the defect weld defects normally they will not we will not use that word impurities weld defects you can nullify or we can make that defect very close to zero not perfectly zero because porosity is inevitable you can suppress it and make it less than 3 percentage daniel sir sir if possible to fabricate below 15 lakh of vam setup <coughs> sir you need some sort of special purpose machine sir sir if you if you limit your budget if you limit your budget then you are end up with less sophistication if you enhance your budget you can get your sophistication my request is any time you can visit my laboratory sorry my institute laboratory not my laboratory institute laboratory from that you can gather the data sir kindly give us lecture at least for one day if possible ah <laughs> yo one day uh, because as i am a academician i can speak it for throughout the day if you provide me some sort of good honorarium or remuneration through engineering selvraj sir i'll just put it in the forum if you give something about a good honorarium i can speak it for one day not even one day i can speak it for two days yes, sir we can have a simple or a seminar sir we can have wm under your resting we will have it sir to future yeah yeah thank you sir ah, okay so it. any possible any possibility to access in sysvel software sir yes great uh, rajkumar sir if you refer my initial part of my uh, this one uh, my publications i worked in that sysvel software uh, currently i am not utilizing that software because i have converted that abacus i have developed my own uh, uh, subroutines for doing this analysis sysvel it's a big uh, complicated thing i am not getting out a good tutorials in sysvel software uh, any other questions i think i have answered your question appropriately rajkumar sir rajkumar sir if you want any have doubt you can uh, unmute and talk sir rajkumar john rajkumar yeah any more doubts you can uh, unmute and unmute uh, and talk sir yeah. voice is not clear interrupting your voice is not clear uh, okay no problem you just uh, you have my mobile id you have my mobile number as well as sir once again once again i think there is some sort of internet connectivity issue so you please make a note of it my email id as well as yeah, i'll share sir john rajkumar is known to me i'll share the your details sir yes so this is my whatsapp number so you please post your query i i will answer your query how to optimize the bead shape for 3d printing is there any system to fix yes great so you have to do only the optimization sir what is the thing sir you take a substrate set the process parameter deposit the filler wire deposit the filler wire go for metallographical studies cut the sample polish it etch it uh, polish it etch it and reveal it in the in terms of optical microscope uh john rajkumar sir please mute your mic sir sir rajkumar sir please mute your mic john rajkumar please mute your mic mute mute your mic sir you can cut the sample using wire or water jet cutting machine section it then polish it etch it reveal the micro reveal the macro macrograph of the weld metal like that you change the parameters based on these things you can optimize the weld bead according to the width what is the requirement sir this is the width i want i want something about 5.6 mm then 
build the material because you have to do the peripheral machining to get the finish of the component. Make it 6.1, then 0.5 mm on 0.5 divided by 2, 0.25 on 0.25 on either sides, you will machine it. You will get the requirement, 5.6. So you have to do some sort of metallographical study, something about a macrograph, reveal of the macrograph. How to give printing after we created the model from Rio? It is, it is something about, uh, uh, it's a good question. The thing is, it, it depends upon the machine that you are working. So if I procured that uh, machine of SLM, that is a selective laser melting of uh, 3 crore rupees. So you have something about a dot .stl file, stereolithography, star STL file. All some, we have a DLL file. You convert the model to DLL file, means what is that? It will cut into different layers. Sir, if I have a material, so this is the job. So it will convert the model into different uh, layers. So automatically this will be fed into the system. You can import the DLL file or STL file into the SLM, not with respect to the robo. Robo means you need another software, a user friendly software, which is uh, feasible for that uh, robo machine. Maybe a Kuka or it may be a Motorman or a Kawasaki. So many robots are available. You need a neutral software to convert your model to a robotic language. Sir, what about residual stresses effect? Uh, Gautaman, sir, uh, shall we, shall we, because it is another big area. So I want to draw the residual stress graph with respect to that weld metal and I want to explain it. Uh, please, please post your query. Uh, so call me during some free times, maybe Saturday and Sunday. I will put some light on this. How to arrange all samples in one plate at the time of printing. Uh, uh, I think uh, you you get so many videos. Pa. Before rising this query, you please watch so many videos uh, in the YouTube. Uh, so many exposures are available. So many videos are posted by different people leading manufacturers like DMG, Mori and all, you will get how they are uh, putting all those things in a single table. Is VAM manufacturer governments are strength in all directions? No, it is of anisotropy in nature. See the sample, what I have projected here, what I have projected here, I'll just come out and I'll show. So this is the component we have built initially. This has been good performing good along this direction, along this direction, along this direction. That is something about biaxial. Biaxial, it's good, superb. But when you apply the load along this direction, that is of, uh, towards the desktop, towards the monitor, something like a forming, it, 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 is, it is failed. Thing is, you have to work in such a way that we are concentration, our concentration is only on the building direction, not on the Z direction. If we do something about the rolling, something about the extra operations, then you will get this property. So if we refer the VAM process, VAM process, it is something called that anisotropy. So it varies with respect to the direction. It is not isotropic. So not even a single world, the single material in this world is of isotropic. All are anisotropy. Here is also anisotropy. I think I have answered your question technically. Uh, Molly Dhanan, sir, I yes. think I have answered it. Huh? Okay, thank you. Sir, sir, others? Uh, sir uh, what about that large volume deposition and making big parts? Uh, ah, yes, that's, yes, that is the thing because normally we have something about uh, constraints or that. Right? So if, if it is weakened in the thickness direction, then add more material. That's all. For example, if it is failing in this direction, in this direction, then what you can do, you can add more material over here and uh, uh, not allow the material to fail along the desert direction. That's all. That is the way you have to develop the component. I have discussed only with the single plate that I have developed here. But here, this component is very bulky component. So most of the load will come only in the downward direction. If you take the crane hook, according to the geometry, you are going to apply a pulling load, our reaction will be coming in this direction. So there will not be any load acting in the biaxial side, something about that lateral, lateral side. We'll have only that uh, axial. There will not be any lateral. 
so automatically this material will be this component will will stand correct sir lakshmanan sir thank you sir thank you thank you thank you sir sir with your with your permission shall i wind up i have oh, another yes, appointment two, just two more two more minutes sir just wait sir sir two more agenda sir there we have to oh. propose what are thanks for you and just wait sir two more minutes and share the screen sir so we will can meet other people yes sir yes sir uh, on the next week's program announcement actually our contract secretary dr kevin akumar is held up in a meeting so i announce the next week's program next week we are celebrating going to celebrate on 1810 that is world standards day the theme is going to be the uh, uh, protecting the planet and saving the planet protect the planet with standards this is what next week's agenda i will uh, circulate all the information through our uh, whatsapp as well as uh, email kindly i request all of you join and uh, grace uh, to uh, next week's program and this uh, is going to be addressed by uh, mr uh, ms ramesh general manager of engineering bhl and uh, he is a man of standards he developed lot of standards for bhl trichy and i require all of you to join for the same and uh, get benefit from that i call upon lechmanan engineer lechmanan to propose what our honored secretary former honored secretary of institute of engineers tacham local city to propose what of thanks over to engineer lechmanan sir thanks for the opportunity i thank on behalf of the institute of engineers tacham local center dr n shivashanmagam associate professor mechanical engineering department national institute of technology Tachirapalli for presenting a wonderful lecture. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a new to me. Before that, uh, we were heard only about plastics deposition, metal powder deposition. Now only we are hearing full fledged manufacturing in the form of uh, uh, in, in, in metals in the form of wire and arc additive manufacturing. It's a, a, today only I am hearing about this. Uh, we it's a it's a very very interesting. a uh, new upcoming technology thanks uh, dr n sirasamagam sir for presenting all of us and uh, uh, giving us an wonder, wonderful uh, introduction to such an uh, advanced um, upcoming uh, topic uh, this is uh, we are very much enlightened uh, because of this lecture sir thank you very much for presenting this beautiful lecture thank you Uh, thank, thank you, thank you one and all present here thanks a lot yes sir thank you sir sir it was a wonderful knowledge treat for all of us really enjoyed your program thank you so much sir yeah yeah thank, thank you, you thank you uh, with your permission sir we say good night to everyone thank you so much for joining with us throughout the uh, india all the people thank you so much now good night to everyone good night so with your permission we will close the program thank you yes sir thank you yes sir thank you sir thank you sir good night sir good night sir thank you sir